how do we diagnose AVMs? AVMs can be diagnosed using different uh, various imaging modalities, including an MRI. So here on the left here, you see an MRI. You can see the AVM as sort of a haze. Um, a CTA, you can see a little bit better here. Uh, you know, you can see the brain less well, you can see the vessels a little bit better. And then on the other end of the spectrum is an angiogram where you don't see the brain at all and you just see the vessels. The uh, pros and cons of each, and it is important to get different imaging modality to really fully evaluate an AVM. M MRI will allow you to localize the AVM so you know if it's an, in an important part of the brain or not something called eloquence. So we can de you can determine uh, based on the location on an MRI whether uh, the AVM is an eloquent part of the brain. Whereas an angiogram will show you all the vascular uh, anatomy that's associated with AVM. And we'll uh, go over that uh, in a little bit more detail. Now, when you talk about an AVM, when you see a patient with an AVM, uh, you need to be able to to, to basically describe some of the main features, and that includes the size and the location of the AVM, what's feeding the AVM, meaning feeding arteries, venous drainage of the AVM, and finally, if there are any associated aneurysms. And I'm just gonna mention the Spessler Martin grading system, even though at the next session, you will hear about this too, because when you talk to a neurosurgeon, invariably, if you talk about an AVM, somebody will ask you, what is the special Martin grade of the AVM? Uh, this is a grading system that's, that was developed by Dr. Spessler and Martin uh, back in 1986, so a few decades ago, where points were given to an AVM uh, for size. You get one, two, or three points, depending on the size being less than three centimeters, between three and six centimeters, or greater than six centimeters. Eloquence, you get a point for eloquence, and one point for drainage into the deep venous drainage, uh, deep venous system. Now, it's not particularly particularly relevant to our talk today, uh, except it's good to be able to mention the special Martin grading whenever you talk about an AVM. And the reason it's not particularly relevant to the natural history is because this grading system was meant to um, assess surgical risks, which we're not talking about today. So let's go through some examples of um, AVMs and how we describe them. This is a 66 year old man who presented with headache and lethargy. And you can see here, there's a hemorrhage in the temporal lobe. You can see some calcifications here and AVMs are sometimes associated with calcifications. The, um, and so how do we describe this AVM? So first of all, size and location. So this is a two centimeter right temporal AVM. And to describe the, the uh, vascular structure, you would need something like an angiogram. So this is a video of the angiogram. This is a uh, right internal carotid artery injection. This is an anteral posterior, uh, posterior view, AP view. You can see here, and the thing to know about an angiogram is that this is basically a movie. You start in the arterial phase. So right now you see the internal carotid artery going up. And as you the movie runs on, here's the middle, here are the middle cerebral arteries. They feed the AVM, which is this tangle right here. So you see the AVM in the arterial phase of this. As I run the movie a little further, you start to see other, you start to see other things. So this is the draining vein. This is the basal vein of Rosenthal. Yeah, it's hard to see here, but you'll see on the lateral view, there's also um, draining veins there. The important thing to note here is that you are seeing the draining veins in the arterial phase. So here you're still seeing the artery, the internal carotid artery, but you see veins that are coming from the AVM. Normally you need to go through arteries, then capillaries, and finally the venous phase to see the, the veins. So this is uh, termed early venous shunting. So whenever you see early venous shunting uh, in an angiogram, 
it tells you you have some sort of vascular malformation like an AVM. This is a lateral view. So here again, this is a internal carotid artery going into the middle cerebral artery here. The AVM, the draining veins from the AVM, uh, some of the basal vein, vein of Rosenthal, you can't see quite as well uh, in this picture, but you see the, uh, the drainage into the vein of LaBay into the transverse sigmoid sinus here. And again, this is early. This is still in the arterial phase. You're seeing all these veins. The actual capillary phase doesn't happen until right about there. And finally, you see the normal veins in the venous phase very late. So the way I would describe this AVM, therefore, is a two centimeter right temporal AVM that's fed by the right MCA and right PCA. And I didn't point that out, but with venous drainage into the basal vein of Rosenthal, the superior sagittal sinus and the transverse sigmoid uh, sinus, and there are no associated aneurysms. Okay. So let's um, just do one more example before we uh, go on. This is a 51-year-old woman who presented with an aphasia. And so you can see here, uh, there's a hemorrhage, an intraparenchymal hemorrhage in the left temporal parietal lobe. The, uh, the CTA shows an associated AVM. Looks like a tangle of vessels. So how do we describe this? Uh, first of all, size and location. It's about one and a half centimeters on the left temporal parietal area. So let's look at the movie again of the AVM. So this is a left internal carotid artery injection. You see, again, you see this tangle of vessels, the AVM arising in the uh, arterial phase of this angiogram. And we'll come back to this to look at the uh, Actually, we just, uh, I'll just show it to you here. This is uh, the middle cerebral artery. Now, you don't have anything to compare to here, but these vessels are very large. Usually, by the time you get this distal, um, vessels become very small. And this is because of the high flow to the AVM. You will often see very large intracranial uh, vessels that are feeding arteries to the AVM. Because of this high flow, many AVMs are associated with what's called feeding artery aneurysm. So here we have uh, this little blip here. This is a middle cerebral artery aneurysm, and it's considered a feeding artery aneurysm to the AVM. And just like we saw before, we look at the uh, lateral view here. You can see the AVM a little bit better, MCA feeding it. And you see here the draining veins right in the middle of the arterial phase, draining into here, the superior sagittal sinus, and also right here into the basal vein of Rosenthal, uh, vein of Galen, straight sinus there, the deep venous system. So the way I would describe this AVM is that it's a 1.4 centimeters of, uh, centimeter left temporal parietal AVM that's fed by the left by left MCA branches and drainage into the basal vein of Rosenthal and superior sagittal sinus. And it has an associated left MCA feeding artery aneurysm. Okay, so those are sort of a basic terminology whenever we talk about AVMs. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate keep our content available for medical students across the world.